Diversity. It's reached all the way to the boardroom these days, and women are in the vanguard. But what is it like for women once they actually get to sit at that big mahogany table? Who actually listens to them? Well, one person who can understand that is joining us today on INSEAD Knowledge. She's INSEAD strategy professor Annette Aris. Welcome to INSEAD Knowledge. Do women on boards really make a difference? Is it worth the struggle to get there? Given my experience, I think there are probably two major reasons why they make a difference. Um, the first is um, they change the rules of the game. If you are in a board, uh, normally in a board you tend to have a lot of alpha male because otherwise you wouldn't end up in the board. And then there's specific rules of how you interact and how you um, play with you, each other. And so you, you don't ask too many questions. You, um, you tend to be um, very much aligned around things and um, sometimes the hunt hunting spirit takes off. And um, I think when you have women on the board, um, they set a different tone. So they're very often not afraid to ask questions, which sometimes men feel they're dumb when they ask them. So they, they're more open, I think, to, to, to when something doesn't sound right to just ask for clarification and to understand why things are there. So that, that's one dynamic. And then the other hand, you know, if you get in critical situations like takeovers, women tend to get a bit less carried away by, by the game aspect of it. And the other aspect, what I think is very important, especially if you have a company where many women work, having a few women on the board actually really uh, motivates the younger women uh, to stay on and to see that there are chances for them. That, um, so I think for a company, for retention's sake, it helps to have women all the way in the board. Uh, even if they buy it, even if companies buy this, this reasoning, how do they find women? The ideal way is, of course, there's some women who worked in the industry, who had senior managed positions, and you ask them to join the board. However, the problem is there are not that many of those women around, so you have to be more creative. Uh, very often, companies just approach headhunters, and headhunters go out and look. The problem is that they tend to be pretty conventional. They don't like to take a lot of risks. And if you want to find women in boards, uh, you have to go for a double diversity because it's not only women you're looking for, but because there's so few senior women managers, you have to look in different corners. So you have to look professional services, so women who used to be s leading accounting firms, uh, strategy consultants, HR people, but also, for example, women who've been very successful entrepreneurs. So you have to take a double risk. You, you cannot only look for different gender, you also have to look for different profiles. And then you have to realize that once those people enter the board, that you not only have to uh, take account of you know, the, the diversity issue, but also the different background issue and, and make sure that you incorporate you know, the different angle those people have, uh, which is not always easy. So how did people find you? You're on several boards. Maybe you should tell us a couple of the boards you're on. So my first few boards were really media companies who knew about my reputation, knew about the things I did, and actually asked me based on that experience. And that for me was really easy because um, I joined the boards not because I was a woman, but because I was an expert. I could bring in knowledge from the outside, which the companies themselves didn't have, which was very helpful for me to establish my credibility. And then having done those boards, um, over time you, you grow. It, it's a profession in itself being a good board member. I completely underestimated that in the beginning, what it entailed. So I made some mistakes, I, I, but then over time you really start to understand how the things work and you, you become more and more of a professional board member. It sounds like there's a perennial uh, short list and, and you're on it. I'm not, I'm not sure. Well, that's, that's the other point. So because there's so few women in boards that once you reach a certain critical point, then it's, I wouldn't say it's easy, but you get asked for many, many other boards because then you have the experience, you're not a risk anymore. So what were some of the big mistakes that you made that you learned from? In the beginning, um, I might have underestimated um, everything which was discussed outside the board. I would go in relatively naive and then there would be you know, important topics in the board and there would be no discussion. And I would say, well, yes, but I don't agree. Or why don't we talk about that? And then there would be this big silence. And then I thought, well, 
what's going on here. And then, of course, you would discover that many things had already been discussed beforehand. And uh, so it's, it's knowing what are the things you can discuss in the formal settings and what are the topics you have to talk to beforehand with certain people and make sure that you understand what's really going on and those kind of things. What do you think the male board members are saying about this wave of women walking into the boardroom? Uh, it's very mixed. Um, some of them just, um, you know, say it's, it's just for politics, it lowers the quality and, and all those kind of things. But actually most of the male I, I work with, uh, they do say, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a hassle finding the woman. But once they're there, it actually really makes a difference. So, so when do you think it won't be a big deal to have a woman on the board? It will take a while because now it's, it's kind of artificial because we start with lots of women in the board and then you have much less women in the senior management and then again you have lots of women in the middle management. So it's a kind of a sandwich effect you have at the moment. And I think it only will not be a big deal anymore once you get enough women in the top management. Which countries have the most women on boards? And, 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 is, and what, what does that tell you about the, the country as well? well I, I don't know all the statistics uh, specifically, but it's clearly that Scandinavian countries are way ahead. Uh, Anglo-Saxon countries are also much more advanced. Uh, countries like Germany and France are now starting to be really serious about it, but still have a long way to go. And then there's countries where it's probably not even on the agenda. So the more self you get, the less, the less relevant it becomes. And uh, it has a lot to do, I think, with the with the overall culture and the overall role women play in society. There are quotas. In, I mean, France has a quota that there need to be something like 40 percent. There are quotas. Is this a good thing? Not a good thing? This is actually a, a hotly debated issue. It's also amongst women and the women who are strongly against it and the women who are strongly in favor of it. My feeling is um, the older you get, the more in favor of quota you get. Because in the beginning, as a woman, you don't see the problem. You say, well, you know, I'm, there is no women's issues. I'm there, I'm young, I'm bright, I'm entrepreneurial. Why should I bother? Then when you get like mid thirties, uh, two things happen. First of all, very often you try to have a family at the same time. And the other thing is you come in leadership positions and then you suddenly get put in all kinds of stereotypes. And so most women, when they are, you know, mid forties and older, they say, well, it, it doesn't work fast enough. We have to get quotas. The thing with quotas is, it's very painful the first few years because you suddenly have to get all these women and you don't have enough of them and you get the wrong ones and it doesn't work. But what you see, especially if you look like countries like Norway or even in Germany where they had the women quota in the Christian Democrat Party, that after a few years actually you get the good women. Also because women see there is an option, so they go for it. And then it starts working really, really well. And I think after maybe five years or so, you can do away with the quotas because then you get into the critical mass thing. So, but as a jump start, um, it might not be the worst solution. What's the biggest compelling reason to have women on board of directors? I think at the end of the day, you, you get better decisions because you have more points of views and you get a more motivated workforce because a large share of the workforce feels that they're also represented all the way up in the board. Thank you very much, Annette Aras, for being with us on NCAD Knowledge. Thank you.